Ta. Hello, I'm Justin from Maggot, and I'm the developer of Spanner. Um, I'm here to announce for you the release of Spanner version 2. Um, it's got some amazing new features, two in particular that I'm really excited about. Of course, a bunch of tweaks and improvements and bug fixes. Um, we're here at Park Road Post in Theatre 2. They've kindly lent me their room for this demonstration. Um, and I'm going to come back down here and show you in a minute the uh, Spanner integration with the System 5 in, in Yukon. But first, I think I'll take you upstairs to my edit room and show you some of the, uh, some of the new features. Oh, I should take this with me. Okay, so uh, the first thing I want to show you is this, the Spanner iPad app. It is an iPad-based remote controller for the Spanner Pro Tools plugin. It's uh, multi-touch, can do pretty much anything the plugin can do, but on this gorgeous portable multi-touch display. Um, it's an incredibly intuitive, smooth and organic way to perform pans, and it's really going to open up new workflows that we've never seen before. Um, it connects over Wi-Fi, or Bluetooth, um, so it's really easy to set up and a lot of fun to use. So let's uh, let's give you a quick demo. Okay, so for me the most critical thing is that it shouldn't be too difficult to get the spanner you want loaded up here on the iPad. So you see, um, all I need to do is call up a spanner GUI, and here it is on the iPad. Here's another mono, and here it is. Um, now if I shift click, I get two of these in Pro Tools. Um, or you can use the target button to do the same thing. And when you do, see I now have the 5.1 here, and in this list over here we have every other currently visible spanner on all the machines on this network. So let me select the mono, and there it is. It's instant swap and instant control. Okay, so I've got uh, an Artist Mix surface here, and uh, these Yukon services have a mode which forces plugins to follow track selection in Pro Tools. So in this case, I can select the track on the surface here, and you see the iPad app's already uh, located, followed along with Pro Tools. Here we are back to the mono. You see, there it is. Um, and the same thing happens in Pro Tools. If you feel like uh, you want to pan something, you just double click it, track is selected, and then there's the panner. So that's an incredibly intuitive, uh, natural way for this thing to, to operate, and um, it really is a pleasure to use. Now on the icon in the System 5, it uh, works slightly differently, but it really is only just one button press away to call up the spanner for this thing. So um, I'll take you down to the System 5 later and, and show you exactly how that works. Uh, but for now, let's, let's have another little play with it and I'll show you some tricks. Okay, so it is a multi-touch iPad app. So one, two, three fingers, as many as you can manage. It um, has cool gestures such as reset or Reset individual, does linking of course and pairs, all, um, we're towing at the moment, we can move, switch back to tow temporarily, um, rotate in absolute mode, um, which works well because we've also added the nearest puck winds. Um, so just stick your three fingers down and you'll get the three nearest in the right place. Um, center percentage, input trim, um, and we can also lock the direction of movement. Um, so at the moment, let's move these things like this. We take off pan so that they'll only move backwards and forwards, vice versa. Yeah, so you'll find it's an extremely powerful set of features, probably even more powerful than what you'll find in the, the Pro Tools GUI. Okay, next, this is one of the things that uh, I, I thought of first when I saw theatrical film mixing. Um, I realized the, the importance of panning special effects sounds against objects on screen, and um, it struck me immediately that what we needed was some sort of visual representation of the position of the pan knob up there on the big screen. So we have a transparent overlay window, which you can position and resize as you like. Now normally, of course, you'd, you'd size it up to match your QuickTime window, so that when you do make a pan move, this beautiful vertical line here matches the edges of your pan to the edges of your picture frame. So anytime a spanner is open, this overlay will pop up um, and remember its previous size. So both when in 
automation right and when in playback you'll see this vertical line anytime the position changes fades away after a few seconds once it's stationary so you can even grab the pan pack up here on the picture and pan with an object um, you can jump into half speed and pan very accurately along with a slow moving character so let's have a go at it I'm just going to reset that pan I've got our actor here walking across screen I've got some foley that I want to pan with him let's try then with uh, the iPad to start with Got a little bit laggy in the middle there but that's okay let's try the next track and hopefully here we are we've got the got the panner for the next track already on the spanner let's go great let's just watch that back in half speed see how we went it's pretty good great okay let's try one uh, with the control surface now where are we? Let's hit play. Good. Uh, now let's say this is a tricky one we've got come up here. Let's jump into half speed and do this one. Uh, we'll start in the right spot. Okay, so the next thing I'll show you is uh, the output solo buttons. So this this is a way for you to hear the output of the plugin rather than the input. It's a much re requested feature. So it's a set of check boxes in the plugin GUI, but it does map onto surfaces. So for here, for instance, in the SATA series with eight channels, I can solo any or all of the eight uh, output channels of a 7.1 plugin. Um, but the real power lies in the plugin GUI with keyboard modifiers, you can do some pretty nifty tricks. So, for example, here's a 5.1 Printmaster that I want to investigate. Um, I'm going to use the solos to have a listen to the individual channels. So, I do have a bit of music in the center. Mm -hmm. um, I can they enter cancel, single clicking, I can shift click, uh, I can apple click to toggle all. So I can switch between front and rear. Um, option click clears them or sets them all, uh, which is useful because we can now treat these as cuts. Cut the center, cut the rear. Um, okay, uh, pimp meters. Now this feature I've added for myself pretty much, um, or anyone else cutting ambiences, because we're, if, you, if you're working with a lot of very low level material, it's often quite hard to see anything on these meters. So. Um, I've added a pimp meters mode in which the meters are pimped such that the low level low level material gets much more of the range. So here we are with it on and off. There you go. Something like uh, minus 50 at this line here instead of minus 22 or whatever it normally is. Okay, text entry. Um, you can now double click and add any value using the keyboard. 75. There we go. So um, obviously this is particularly useful for setting precise values, minus three for example. Um, a lot of people were asking for it, so there you have it. Nearest click. Previously we had to click exactly on one of these pan parks to make it move. Now we can just click anywhere and the nearest one will respond. Uh, extremely useful if you're trying to catch something moving. If you've got an existing pan and you want to try and catch it on the way past. There you go. Um, what else have we got? Oh, the smoothing control now remembers. We've got a few bunch of fixes and uh, additions that you'll find as you use the thing. So why don't we um, why don't we pop downstairs now and I'll show you how the iPad works with some of the larger consoles. Okay, so uh, here we are back at Theatre Two Park Road. Uh, I'm going to show you just how simple it is to integrate the Spanner Remote iPad app with uh, System Five and Yukon. Um, so I've got two Pro Tools machines here, I've got a, let's say it's an effects machine and a Foley machine and they've each got a few spanners on them. So I've um, mapped, mapped it all onto the surface here. Let's say these are the effects strips and the Foley machine over here, completely independent machines. Um, okay, so this is how simple it is. 
Here's the iPad. Here's the spanner. That was one button press. I hit the spanner button on the console and here it is. Uh, let's go for mono on the other machine. There it is. I'm panning. It really couldn't be simpler. It's one button press, as many machines as you can stick on your local network. Um, now let me show you just how responsive it is as well. I don't know if you can see down here the uh, knobs on the desk moving in response to the iPad and vice versa of course. Um, it's super portable of course, you can put it on the armrest, carry it with you uh, as you move down the console. Um, you can stick it on a spare panel on your surface, replace the surround panels, give it to the director, send him up the back, let him do his own pans. Um, what else? Oh, I should show you the new, there's some new parameters that we have on the control surfaces as well. These aren't real parameters as such, uh, they don't have automation lanes inside the plugin. Um, these are what I'm calling meta parameters. They control the real parameters that actually write inside Pro Tools, X and Y dimensions. So um, dive in here and we'll have a, we'll have a look at these uh, eight new parameters that I've got here. Um, so left, right pushes everything left and right. Front, back pushes everything front, back. Width does what it says and depth does as well. Width for the front only. Width for the rear only, and two very exciting features. One is rotate, goes 180 degrees in either direction, and this last one, spin. If I turn to the right slightly, it spins continuously to the right slightly as long as I'm holding it. The further I go, the faster it goes. I can spin back the other way by slowly turning the other way. Hold there, a bit faster, a bit slower. So continuous spin. So the overlay, it's the uh, same system I was showing you earlier, only here in the context of a big mix, big console, big screen and a room full of people. Um, so here we have a separate picture system for, for the big screen, although if we used Pro Tools Picture, sure we could have the overlay up there, but um, you may want to avoid showing the whole room and the other mixes, the finer details of your panning. So in this case I've set up um, one of the LCDs here with the picture monitor from Pro Tools. Um, Park Road has this clever monitor switching system which lets you put any of the pic any of the monitors from any of the Pro Tools systems on these LCDs. So this is quite a quite a useful way to do uh, visual panning. So let's just use the example from before. Here's a mono from our Foley machine or a fix machine. Let's, uh, let's roll that. You can watch while I do it on the uh, surface. Okay, I'll catch the next line. Cool. Yeah, so you can see how useful and handy that is. Works here, works here, works on there on the Pro Tools machine if you need to. Very handy. So that's uh, Spanner version 2. Uh, I'm sure you're as excited as I am and you're going to run off and download the free iPad app and download the demo of the plugin. Um, thanks to Park Road for letting us use this fantastic facility. And uh, don't forget to check out our website, maggot.co.nz, or the Facebook page, Maggot Software, uh, for news, updates, um, giveaways perhaps. Um, so thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you at version 3.